Well, U.S.-led coalition military efforts in Syria have seen several failures. And while the Pentagon is ready to admit mistakes have been made, it also seems to be trying to shift the blame. Miguel Francis Santiago has more. The U.S. seems to take great pride in its ability to admit its mistakes. Remember John Kerry talking about this at the United Nations? Yes, the coalition did hit people on Saturday. We did. A terrible accident. And within moments of it happening, we acknowledged it. Well, they did admit the mistake and even launched an investigation. But after its results, the blame game is on. U.S.-led coalition F-16s and A-10 planes conducted strikes against Syrian armed forces for a whole 27 minutes, while the Russian command made several attempts to reach the U.S. and let them know that they got the wrong guy in their crosshairs. Well, let's reconstruct the order of events. The U.S.-led strikes began because apparently one of the Syrian armed forces vehicles befitted an ISIS description. The Russian military instantly called up the U.S. command, but to no avail, the officer responsible for receiving incoming calls was absent for a whole 27 minutes. Wait, so how do you not pick up the phone on a hotline during an ongoing operation, a hotline established between the U.S. and Russia specifically for these kinds of situations? And here's what happened when the Russians called for a second time after 27 minutes. According to U.S. Brigadier General Richard Koh, they, the Russians, elected not to leave a message and went on hold pending the arrival of the officer in question, who was still not there after that intense 27 minutes of airstrikes. Hello. No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Now, the Russian Defense Ministry has taken the human error apology with a pinch of salt. After all, the U.S. Air Force has perhaps the most precise targeting and drone technology in the world. But the final statement on the situation was... If the airstrike happened because the Americans had the wrong target location, this is a direct consequence of U.S.'s stubborn unwillingness to coordinate its anti-terror action in Syria with Russia. Now, you might think that the logical conclusion of the situation would be to improve cooperation with Russia. Wrong. Will the United States consider cooperating with Russia to validate targets on the ground in the future? Um, we have no plans at this point to um, cooperate with Russia in that way. This was said just several hours after the results of the investigation into the Erezor incident were published. However, after striking 15 or 32 positions that were supposedly meant for ISIS, but unfortunately ended up killing 62 Syrian soldiers and wounding over 100 more, Lieutenant General Jeffrey Harrigan said that, and I quote, in this instance, we did not rise to the high standard we hold ourselves to. And we must do better than this each and every time. Fear in a war where one small mistake can basically lead to a major outbreak. If the, if the Russians or the Americans shoot down their jets by a mistake, uh, that would be a, a disaster for both sides. So at this moment in time, there is a hotline which cannot be ignored and unanswered. It doesn't sound right. In conclusion, well, perhaps the special U.S.-Russia military hotline should be taken much more seriously. Miguel Francis Santiago, 